All right, 2025 is just around the corner and it's time to start thinking about what kind of like skills and things that we need for the year 2025. I've been a software engineer for like 15 years. So I've, so I've had to think about like what I need to do in the, in the upcoming year to make myself get a better job, to get promoted, all these other kind of things. So it's important to think about what we can do to improve in the next year. So in this video, I wanna help share like four things that I think are very important in the year 2025 for us to help uh, find new jobs, get new jobs, or just uh, get promoted in the jobs that we already have. So the first skill I'm gonna talk about is I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this use AI, but don't. So it's kind of like a, it's an either or thing. Let me expand on that a little bit. So I'm not gonna list a bunch of AI tools out there, like which ones are the best. It's all up to you and your workflow about how AI is gonna work best for you. The thing I want to really drive home is that everyone is gonna be and going to continue to use AI to some extent in their job. But I think it's very important that people are starting to use AI, but also use it as a tool so that you don't need AI, if that makes sense. Use it for the stuff that you already know how to do, of course, but when you start building sort of solutions, or you're coding something new that you've never done before and you get it to work with AI, it's very important to be disciplined at that point to go back and understand every single step of the way about why it works. Because if you're just pushing up code that works, but you're not entirely sure about how it works, then that's gonna be a problem for future you and also the people that you work with locally. You're not really learning in those moments. You need to have AI be uh, something that accentuates, that really like expands your current skill set versus becoming reliant on it. Because if you're just using the tool to do your job, it's gonna blow up in your face at some point. Okay, this next skill, uh, a lot of people aren't gonna be that excited about, and I am gonna defend that it is a skill, but I'm gonna talk about shopping local. So a lot of people are really bummed out that it's so hard to find jobs, but a lot of people are, are really focused on just remote jobs. And for the longest time, especially in COVID, everything was remote. Whether we like it or not, people are returning to office. Big companies are saying you need to come back to the office. And there is a lot of value to being in an office for some people. So working remote makes a lot of sense for those that, uh, that don't need to collaborate, that, that are kind of like seasoned vets, that are absolute pros, that can finish a project without really needing any help from anyone else. For the most of us, you're gonna have to collaborate and talk to people outside of just yourself, and that is easier done in an office. So when we think about shopping locally, is when you're looking for a new job or you're looking to break into the industry, it's very important to start looking towards teams that are in your city or as close to you as you can because you're going to have more advantages that way. You're going to have a better chance of getting the job and also you can learn a lot faster when you're with other people inside of that project. It's just the fact of the matter. You can still do it remotely. You're going to have more benefits being on site with that person. The next skill I want to talk about is because I feel like a lot of people are drifting away from it but I wanna come back to it because it's like a core engineering principle. I wanna talk about testing. So this applies mostly to engineering for like testing your code to make sure that it works, but it can actually be applied to like most tech related jobs. The idea is that you wanna be able to not only push out a project or be able to finish something that you're working on, but also have a test that proves it's doing what you know it's doing. And on top of that, Testing also like allows other people to understand it quicker and be able to add on to it easier. Now, especially when it comes to AI, a lot of people, you know, pushing out code, if you're able to test the code that you are building up with AI, then that also shows that you have an intimate understanding of it. So testing not only like makes sure that you're pushing out solid code, but forcing you to know it intimately and know that like this is how things work. Now, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to think as an engineer, but if you're working in any job really, and you so, sort of propose a project, you start working on something, having a testing mindset will always help you as long as you're thinking like, what if this person doesn't know as much as we thought? What if we're relying too much on this third party or this software? What if, what if the users don't do what we ask them to? Those kind of questions will help bulletproof any sort of project you're working on, whether that's coding or anything else. Like having that testing mindset and strengthening that skill will make you so much better 
as far as advancing your career and getting better at your craft. The last skill I want people to learn in 2025 is networking. And of course, if there's a video that I'm putting out, if there's a chance to talk about networking, I'm going to talk about networking. Think of it this way. So to some extent, every job, every job hunt, every sort of interaction you have with anyone in your career, that is part of networking. And it's important to use every sort of interaction to help strengthen your network. I'm not talking about be a sleazeball and just try to like expand as many contacts as you can. I'm talking about strengthening the people that you talk with now and the people that you work with now and will work with in the future. Now, when it comes to networking, I get a lot of people respond the same way every single time. And I don't think that they're really good excuses. So I want to address them here. The first one is I'm not very good at names. Well, you know what? A lot of people aren't, but that's like not and that's not an excuse to not try to like remember someone's name or try to get to know more people. How about you just write it down, write down their name, write down something interesting about them, write down what they're working on or what they're interested in, their skill sets. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I've been doing that since the beginning of my career and it's helped me a million times. And guess what? It's not, it's not weird. Like if you come up to someone that you haven't seen in a while, and you go back to their notes and be like, oh, hey, Jeff, how have you been? I haven't talked to you in like five years. How is this project that you're working on? How is your family? Like having that knowledge shows that you care and that you're trying. And the person that receives that sort of a response is going to appreciate that 100 times. There are moments when I am interacting with someone and I notice that they don't remember my name. I, I give them a freebie. I said, you know, I will say something that includes my name like a story or something so that they will have the opportunity to like, oh yeah, it's Cody. My name is Cody. Simply just write things down, take notes. It's completely fine. And that's completely socially acceptable. And the second part is what I get a lot of people saying, and I still don't think it's an excuse. It's just something that you have to adapt to. And the thing that a lot of people say is that I'm an introvert. It's, it's hard for me to network, so I can't. And I that is definitely not an excuse. Some of the most successful people I've ever met in my life are introverts. And see, the, the way that you act as an introvert is different than if you're an extrovert when it comes to networking. When you are an introvert, you need to focus on making sort of every sort of interaction count. So just kind of cutting through the stuff that's going to drain your social battery, but actually getting, having the skill and having the ability to have a conversation boil down to what needs to be said and what we need to do to advance. That is a skill that every introvert, any sort of like talkative extrovert can also learn how to do. This will help you advance your career if you're able to take very uh, tiresome conversations, boil it down to what needs to be done and then move on and get stuff done, then that is like a superpower. And when it comes to introverts, if you get into tech and if you're able to like learn how to code and all these other things, then you have established that you know how to learn new skills. Networking and communicating with people, that's a skill. Now, being able to like be concise and be able to work with people no matter who they are, that's also a skill. So I know that everyone can do this. This is just, is this something that you have to make an effort and work towards. And not every single person really has to drain you. You can find your people. You can find the people that do charge you up, that you have similar interests and hobbies and sort of like different ways of like how to see the world. Those people will charge you up and you need to make sure that you stick with those kind of people as well to help like grow your kind of social, emotional and professional network that way. Now, this whole uh, introverts and networking, I'm going to have an entire video on this. So stick around if you're interested in that kind of topic. And also let me know in, down in the comments if you want me to expand on different strategies in this area, because it's something I feel very passionate about as an old school introvert myself. I've been able to learn the skills needed to do this sort of networking and this sort of thing properly. Now, as I mentioned in this other video about how I think software jobs are coming back, I don't think that they're going to come back as big as they used to a couple of years ago, but I do think that they're back. So if you're interested in this conversation, then I know that you will go be interested in this video. So go ahead and check that out. All in all, I hope this video is helping people in 2025 learn the right skills and advance their careers and get better in their careers. So let me know what you think in the comments. And either way, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.